Jada and Stitches show. We've arrived in September, which means it's time for the ninth installment in our 2020 patchwork calendar blanket. And this month, we're going to make the square in a square patchwork block. This is another classic looking fabric patchwork block that I had a lot of fun turning into a crochet pattern. It looks a bit like a picture frame, and it's a great way to use up scraps. Of course, I'm going to demonstrate in the two-tone color pattern that I've been doing all along this year, but I made another one in bright colors as well, and Mr. and Stitches is going to put in a couple of graphics of other little colorways you might want to consider if you're stuck for ideas. We're going to use the same yarn and the same hook as we've been using for all of the pattern pieces in this blanket, and that's all you really need to know. If you haven't already subscribed to our channel, please take a moment to click that subscribe button below this browser. When you do, every single time we upload a video, it'll arrive in your subscription feed and you won't miss an episode. So, let's grab our hooks, grab our yarn, we'll head on over to the craft table, and we will stitch up this month's Square in a Square patchwork block together. In order to make today's Square in a Square patchwork block, I'm going to be using the same yarn, a size 4 medium weight acrylic yarn that I've been using for all of my blocks. I'm going to be demonstrating the two-tone pattern today, but of course I'm also going to be using white for my border. That's the same color I've been using all along. You can use whatever colors you like, of course. The largest part of this square is the big square inside the square. That is going to require at least 36 yards of color. Each of these little rectangular pieces are going to require 9 yards each, or if you're going to make them all the same color, 36 yards for those four little rectangles. And for the little squares here that sit in the corner, each one of them uses 3 yards of color. If you're going to make them all the same, you're going to want 12 yards of that color in total. And of course you want around 9 or 10 yards of your border color for this square. You want a pair of scissors, a yarn needle, and the hook we're using is a size 5.5 millimeter also known as an I or a 9 in the US, a size 5 in the UK. And once you've got all that together, we can get started. If you really enjoy our show and you have a lot of fun with us here, then consider supporting us. You can subscribe, click the like button, share our videos with your friends, or you can purchase a pattern at our Etsy shop, or join and become a channel member. You'll find more information in the description box down below, links to our Etsy shop, and also how to join, and there's more information if you click that join button below this browser. As always, I recommend drawing yourself a quick graph and coloring it in so you've got something to refer to as we work our way through this block. You want to draw yourself a quick square, and then draw a line about a, about an eighth of the way in all the way across, another one down here, and then do the same thing on both sides. That'll give you those four little corner squares, these four nice little rectangles, and a big square in the middle. You're going to go ahead and number them one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, if you like, or just go ahead and color them in. And you can keep it on hand as we work through the block together. We're going to work the middle three blocks first, so blocks four, five, and six. We're going to start down here with the middle bottom block, number six, so you're going to grab that color. We're going to begin with a slip knot on our hook, and we're going to chain 26 to begin. Once you've got 26 chains, we're going to be using the double crochet stitch throughout. We're going to skip the first three chains from the hook, find the fourth one, and double crochet into that fourth chain from the hook. So those skipped three chains are going to count as a double crochet stitch. Double crochet into the fourth chain from the hook, you're going to double crochet into each of those chains now, all the way back to the beginning, and at the end of row one, you'll have 23 actual double crochet stitches, plus your turning chains, which will count so 24 stitches in total. At the end of row one, you'll have 24 stitches, and that includes your turning chains back here. 
For row two, and really the beginning of every row from here on out, we're going to chain two. That chain two will count as a double crochet, so don't make your chains too tight. Turn your work. Because our turning chains count as a double crochet stitch, that first stitch right here is always accounted for. So that stitch, sort of pretend it's sitting on top of that first actual stitch, it counts. So you do not work into this stitch. It's already been used. Instead, turn your attention to the next stitch, double crochet into that stitch, and double crochet in each stitch all the way across. Don't forget to, to make sure you double crochet into the top of the turning chains from the previous row. Because they count as a stitch, we have to also work a stitch into the top of them. I'll show you what that looks like though when we get there. At the end of every row, the last double crochet you work needs to be in the top of the turning chains. So don't miss the turning chains. You can either flip them over so that you can see them, or you can just stick your hook through the top and double crochet. That way you know you've got 24 stitches across in that row or whatever the proper row count needs to be and you always count that chain two that begins the row as a stitch. So 24 stitches. Row three, chain two, turn, skip that first stitch because it's already been used, double crochet in each stitch across including the top of the turning chain and that'll be it for block number six, the first little block in our square. At the end of row three, make sure that last double crochet is worked into the top of those turning chains. Count them up, including those chain two sort of turning at the beginning. You should have 24 stitches. That's it for the first little block. That's block number six or the bottom middle block. You can snip your yarn. Fasten off. Make that a nice tight knot. Turn your work. We're going to build Block number five, our big square, so the centerpiece of our entire calendar blanket square here. We're going to start to build that right on top of the one beneath it. So you're going to grab that color now. We're going to make a slip knot. Every time we start a new block, we're going to start with a slip knot on our hook. We're going to join our yarn in the top of the last stitch of the previous row, and it's easily identifiable because that tail is attached to it. So you just slip your hook right through that stitch. I'm going to work over top of my little short tails, but of course you can leave yours out and just weave them in later. It's entirely up to you. We're going to join with a slip stitch. And then I like to pull both my tails inside my work. This is what helps keep a nice straight edge for myself. This is great whenever you're changing colors when you're crocheting. Chain two, nice and loose. Because we're chaining two and the chain two counts as a double crochet, we don't use that first stitch. And because we changed color, you can really see why that chain two that counts as a double crochet actually uses up that first stitch. So just keep that in mind at the beginning of every row. Chain two counts as stitch. You double crochet into the next stitch and you double crochet in each stitch across. Don't forget to double crochet into the top of the turning chains from the previous row. That's where the last stitch of every row gets worked. You're going to have 24 stitches at the end of this row. You're going to chain two, turn, and keep repeating this very simple little double crochet stitch for 12 rows in total. So we're working on the nice big center part of our square. It's 24 stitches across, it's 12 rows tall. Once we've finished 12 rows of the middle section, so that's block number five here, the very big center square on our block, you can trim your yarn, fasten off, flip your block over, and now we're going to work on the patch number four, this one at the top middle. So we're going to complete the middle three and then we're going to move on to the side ones. So you're going to grab that color now. And just like all the other little patches here in this block, we're going to start the slip knot on our hook. We're going to join our yarn in the top of the last stitch. So just slide it underneath that last stitch there. Join with a slip stitch. Chain two to begin the row. 
and double crochet into every single stitch all the way across, including the top of the chain two from the previous row. And this is the mirror image of the bottom patch. You're going to work three rows in total for patch number four. Each row will have 24 stitches in it. Don't forget to chain two and turn at the end of every row. And I'll see you at the end. At the end of the third row of your last patch, in total you've worked 18 rows all the way up the middle part of your square. So three rows for block number six, bottom middle, 12 rows for block number five, the very center, and another three rows for block number four, the top middle. We're going to fasten off our yarn. Again, you don't have to worry about weaving in your ends just yet, or you can go ahead and do that. We're going to just turn our block. You can turn it, flip it, it doesn't matter which side you want to start on. We're going to start working down the sides now. So if you have different colors on either side of your block, I'm going to be working on the uh, left side, so these top, so numbers one, two, and three. So I'm going to just turn it sideways and I'm going to begin with block number one, then block number two, then block number three. So whatever your block number one color is, go ahead and grab that. Like every other block, we're going to start with a slip knot in our chosen color on our hook. And I'm going to work over top of that little tail, but like I said, actually, you know what, I'll leave it out just so you can see what I'm doing here. We want to work down the raw side of our square. So this is just like all of our previous squares. You can slip your hook through the side of the stitch, try to get at least two loops of the stitch off over your hook, and a loop running underneath it. You can see that there. You don't want to work around the whole stitch, otherwise it'll create a gap. So we're going to join with a slip stitch. Chain two, because that chain two is still counting as a double crochet stitch. And now we want to work another double crochet stitch into the side of that stitch that we joined in. So two double crochet per edge of stitch. That's what you want to keep in your head. You've got three rows here. So we're going to work two double crochet into the edge of each of those rows. So you're going to have a total of six double crochet in your first little row of this little corner square. Remember, these are the little corner squares from our design. So just evenly space them out. Try to work your way, sort of just split the stitch. Split the stitch. Don't work around it. Work through it. It just helps keep things neat and tidy and avoids any gaps from happening. There we go. So that's six double crochet, including that little chain two, worked down the edge of block number four. So this is block number one, and we're just working it down the side. Next two rows are very simple, just like every other row. Chain two, turn, double crochet in each stitch across. Don't forget the top of the chain two from the previous row. You'll have six stitches in this row chain two, turn, and double crochet in each stitch all the way back for another six stitches in total. The little corner squares are nice and quick and simple. Once you've finished the last stitch in the third row of your little corner block, so row one, row two, row three, each row has six stitches in it all double crochets. Snip our yarn, fasten off, and we're still working down the same side. So now we want to cover this part of the square. So if we're holding our little square, I guess it doesn't really matter how I look at my graph, but we've just done square number one or block or patch number one, and now we're going to do patch number two, which is this little rectangle. So whatever color that is, you're going to grab that, we're going to start with a slip knot. We're going to join our yarn in the edge of the next stitch. So just grab a piece of it. Remember, you don't want to go around it. You want to go through it. Join with a slip stitch. I'm going to tug my little tail in there. Chain two, because every row begins with a chain two. But before we leave, we want to make sure that we attach 
this middle patch to the first patch we did. So you're going to find the edge of that first row right there and you're just going to slip your hook through it and slip stitch. That counts as the first double crochet worked along this side of our block and the next double crochet is worked into the edge of the same row. So just find a little piece of it, stick your hook through it. Remember you're not working around the stitch, you're working through the stitch and double crochet. You're going to work two double crochet into the edge of each of those rows all the way down. You're going to have 24 double crochet worked across that middle section or for the first row of patch number two. I've worked two double crochet into the edge of each row of that middle block. So I've got 24 double crochet worked all the way across the side of it. Remember that, <clears throat> excuse me, chain two that we start with counts as a stitch. Like every other row, we're going to chain two, turn our work. That chain two counts as a double crochet, so we double crochet into the next stitch and in each stitch across. And I'm going to catch up with you when we get back to the edge of this little patch so I can show you how to join it to the adjacent square again. I've worked a stitch into every stitch all the way across, so all double crochets. I want to make sure I don't miss the top of the chain two from the previous row though, and because it's attached to my next block, or to block number one, it might be hard to see, so you don't want to miss it. If you're confused, just go back and count. Up to this point you should have 23, including your little chain two over here. So number 24 is going to be worked into the top of that chain two. If it's a little difficult to get your hook through, just pause kind of pry those little loops apart, pull up a loop in it, and double crochet. And that's stitch number 24. We want to make sure we join it to the block before we continue. So find the top of the middle row, or row two, and just slip stitch. Nothing fancy, you're just joining it to the side of that block. Chain two. And before we turn, we're just going to slip stitch into the top of that last row of block number one so we can join it. So it's been joined at the top of every row all the way along and it looks a little funny when you're making it but don't worry it ends up looking just fine when you're all done. Now we turn, we make sure that our hook is on the front of our work and this is the last stitch of the previous row. Remember that your chain two, even if it's not sitting perfectly on top of it, counts for having used this stitch. So you're still hopping over the first stitch, finding the next stitch, and double crocheting into it. And if you keep your stitches nice and even, everything will kind of pull itself into alignment. So I'm gonna get that little stitch out of the way. And this is how that little edge is shaping up already. And now you just double crochet into each stitch all the way across. Don't forget to double crochet into the top of the chain two. And that's it for patch number two, this little medium sized rectangle here running across the side of our block. And that's how we attach the patches together. Nice little attach as you go sequence. And now you can finish off this patch. That's my 24th stitch last stitch in my third row. I've worked it into the top of that chain too. That's it for that little patch. You can trim your yarn. Fasten off. And we are going to work the last little corner square. So you can sort of pull out your square as you go, but don't worry, it's all going to look nice and neat and tidy when we're done. So that's this little guy. So like I said, it doesn't really matter how I look at mine, but that will be We've just done block one, block two, we're going to finish the side with block number three. And then you're going to do exactly the same thing on the other side that we've just done here, but following whatever colors you're using in your graph. So grab that corner color. We're going to make a slip knot. 
we're going to join our yarn in the edge of that stitch so just find a nice place to put it that looks good right there join with a slip stitch chain two to begin and before you leave oops you want to make sure that you join it to the side of the top of the first row of that adjacent patch so just slip it in there if you think that's too much color you can just sort of grab grab the edge of it there you go that's nice and neat and then you're going to double crochet once into the edge of that same row that you joined your yarn in so that's two double crochet per row edge and just like the first block we made here you're going to work two double crochet into the edge of each row that works out to six double crochet in total across that first row of your last little block on this side There we go. So two double crochet per row edge, chain two, turn and work your way back. And remember we've still got to join row two and row three to the side of that other patch there. When you get up to the side of your patch adjacent, don't forget to double crochet in the top of that chain two from the previous row get get a piece of it any way you can there we go that's the last double crochet in that row I want to join that row to the top of the row that matches it right next door so I'm just slip my hook through there just a simple little slip stitch nothing fancy chain two to begin my last row before I leave I'm just going to slip stitch next door into the top of that third row turn my work now that's the double crochet that this chain two is technically a part of so we don't use that one instead we begin with the one next to it whoops there we go and double crochet into the remaining four the last stitch is going to go into the top of your chain two you're still going to have six stitches at the end of this little row so your corner squares are really small and cute there are six stitches by three rows so really really small there you go all done there snip your yarn fasten off you can weave in your tails and now or wait until a little later but there's that side done and you're going to do exactly the same thing on the other side so whatever colors are on your little graph for your right side so that would be blocks seven eight and nine you're going to do exactly the same thing up the other side once you've worked the full right side of your block which is pretty much a mirror image of the left side no matter how you turn your square you should have a square within a square that is very square <laughs> now you can pick a side you might want to flip it over decide which side you like best this is the side i like the best and we're going to put our border on now so you're going to grab your border color and we'll start with that we're going to start with a slip knot just like every other little section and you want to start on a side where you've got the tops of actual stitches worked across those three sections so you see how this would be the side of the block there's the top of stitches the side of a block I just find it easier to start uh, on a side where you've got actual stitches to work into you're going to want to have six stitches across this side, 24 across the side of this patch, and six across the little square. And that's the same on every side. So six, 24, six, six, 24, six, and so on. You're going to have a total of 36 stitches on each side. If you're ever unsure where to work a stitch or where to start, you know you need six stitches across this little patch. So there's one, two, three, four, five, oops, six. So we want to join in the top of that little chain two join with a slip stitch I'm going to pull my little short tail inwards we're going to chain two to begin that counts as a double crochet 
and I'm going to double crochet into the top of each of the remaining five stitches across the side of that first little patch. So I'll have six stitches along the side of the first patch, or the edge, I guess you can sort of call it an edge, not necessarily a side. And of course that includes the little chain two that we began with. And now I've come to the middle patch. I want to make sure I've got 24 stitches worked across there. Same thing, if I'm ever unsure where to put my first stitch, find the last stitch, work backwards, and wherever 24 lands you, that's where you're going to work the first stitch of that little spot. So 24 across that section, 6 across the last section, and that will be the first side of our square's border done. Each side of your square will have 36 border stitches, so that's 6, 24, and 6 worked across the patches respectively. When you finish the last stitch on a side, you're going to chain 2 to turn the corner, and then you're going to continue 6 stitches, 24 stitches, 6 stitches, that's a total of 36. When you're working down the sides of a little patch like this one, remember it's 2 double crochet per row edge. There's three rows there, which means that you're going to have six stitches at the end. You can work the first double crochet working down a side into the same place that you worked your last double crochet if you want. And then just make sure you're splitting the stitches, not working around them as you work down the side. I like to try and get two loops over top of my hook. That's the first six worked. And then of course you're going to run into either the bottom of your, so the foundation stitches of that first st block we started with, or it'll be the tops of the stitches of the other block of the middle three that we ended with. So you're gonna treat foundation stitches just like you would regular stitches. You're gonna work 24 double crochet across this patch and then six across the other for a total of 36 all the way across and then chain two to turn the corner and you're going to do the same thing. Work up the next two sides, always chaining two at the corner. I'll catch up with you when we get back round to the beginning. That's all four sides of my square with a border now. There's 36 border stitches along each side and a little chain two to turn the corner for each corner. My last stitch on my last side, I worked into the same place that I started. So I joined and changed two out of this little spot here. I worked my last stitch into it. Chain two for your last little corner. Find the top of that chain two from the very beginning and slip stitch to join. And that is it. You can snip your yarn Fasten off. Take a moment to weave in all of your tails if you haven't already, including that last one. Lay it flat. You can pull out your little corners. Sort of stretch it into shape anywhere that you feel it wants to maybe bow a little bit. There. And any way you turn it, it should be a perfect little square with little squares in the corners. A square within a square with squares. <laughs> It really does look like a picture frame, and it fills me with other creative ideas, I must say. This would look really cool repeated for its own blanket, um, but I really love this one as the ninth installment. Also, if you have trouble joining as you go, remember, just like the other blocks in this series, you can leave long tails out, just crochet the individual pieces, and then seam up the little seams later with a um, a little bit of leftover yarn and your yarn needle. So you can still seam it that way with a little bit of sewing if you find the join as you go a bit troublesome. But I do encourage you to try it because it's a nice quick way to connect all of your bits and pieces as you crochet. We hope you enjoyed making this blog along with us this week and we will see you soon here on the Jaden Stitches Show. Until then, stay safe, stay crafty, and have an awesome week. Bye everybody! Hi everyone, this is Mama and Stitches. Thank you for watching. Here are a few other videos you might enjoy. Don't forget to subscribe 
and you can also click the like button and the bell. Thank you. Have a wonderful day.